Robert Fritz's Structural Consulting Channel. What this is, we present full structural consultations, ones that change people's lives. The idea behind this channel is for you to witness a completely different understanding of the human condition. Here are a few things to know. Structural consulting is not therapy. It is an exploration of the underlying structures in the client's life that produces predictable patterns of behavior. What is structure? Structure is a combination of elements that impact each other. In these sessions, the client's structures are a combination of what they want to create, how reality actually is, and the various concepts that they have. The concepts clients have are usually hidden from them but these concepts have impact in influencing the client's life patterns. A change of structure will cause a change of the client's patterns. The principle, the underlying structure of anything will determine its behavior. The process involves seeing the actual patterns in the client's life, which leads to a better understanding of the client's underlying structure. The sessions last between one or two hours. We suggest that if you do decide to watch them, do so when you have time to see the entire process. If you want to see more structure consultations, subscribe to the channel. And here is the session. So hi, um, what did you uh, want to talk about? Um, well, I've got a, a major transition that's going to be happening. Uh, I don't know exactly when. Um, earlier this year, my the parent company that I run decided that they're going to sell our company. And so um, originally the um, idea was that uh, that would be completed by the end of June. That did not happen. It's a difficult time to sell a company. We're an oil field service company, and that's not exactly what a lot of people are looking to invest in right now. And so um, I, for the foreseeable future, I'm going to continue running the company until it gets sold. I obviously won't know uh, what my future will be. Um, but given that I've got this big change I, that I know is going to be on the horizon, it's made me think that um, this might be a good time to think of what is the next thing that I want to do uh, in, in my career or maybe make a lateral move. Okay. Um, by the way, um, we have this satellite that sometimes freezes the internet for a moment. And so if I freeze and you don't know what I said, just tell me that I froze and I'll repeat whatever it is. that I said. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, when, uh, when did you um, know that you were going to be moving on once the company is sold? Well, I don't know for, uh, for sure, and obviously a lot of that's, uh, but it, uh, so I found out about this around uh, December of last year, and mm -hmm. really it became, we, they retained an investment bank to uh, manage the sales process in January, and I've been working with them, but uh, for about two or three months, um, and I would say around March uh, of this year, March or April, I started thinking about, um, obviously, there's a, there's a chance that um, when the company sold, depending on who the purchaser is, they'll, they'll want someone else to run it. They may not want a CEO. They may want to fold it into their uh, company. And plus, I, it was just, um, I... I <laughs> I originally thought it, it's such a great thing to run a company and to be a CEO. And I've realized that it's a, it's a lot of investment and in, uh, work and energy and uh, commitment to people and really doing a lot of uh, stuff that. Um, how long have you been, uh, how long have you been a CEO? Uh, this will be about six and a half years now. Mm -hmm. Did you start the company that is owned by the parent company? No, I'm not the founder. And in fact, what happened was the founder sold it to the parent company, which is out of Japan. Mm -hmm. And when they sold it, the, uh, or the CEO at the time resigned and they asked me to uh, come in. And 
they were actually changing the function of the company. They were going from what was originally a, a navigation services provider that worked for geophysical companies to a geophysical service provider that works directly uh, for oil companies. So that was the transition I uh, spearheaded. I'm sorry, I missed what the last thing you said. Uh, transition from what to what? So from a, a company that worked for, um, that basically provided navigation and positioning services to help companies that did seismic exploration offshore Mm -hmm. uh, we transitioned from that to a seismic exploration company that actually worked directly for uh, oil companies. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, at some point they will sell the company. Do, do, is that right? Yeah. And I, I suspect it's going to be this year and, and probably sooner rather than later. So I'd say it's in a month or two. Okay. So do you have a decision to make uh, on your side? Yes. Okay. If they offered you the job to continue on, would you say yes or would you say no? I, I would say yes, but I would actually want to have a discussion with them. And uh, my, my real preference would be if I continued on with the company would be to have more of a technical role than a CEO role to be blunt. Yeah. So you don't want to be CEO? It, it's not a passion that I have. And it, it's something... I'll take it as a no. That's a no. That's No, I don't want to be CEO, I mean. Versus... Yeah, no, I didn't. Yeah. Uh, not really, no. Okay. All right. So one way or the end of the cycle, you will no longer be a CEO. Is that right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there might be a possibility that they'll hire you to do um engineering or scientific stuff yeah yeah which is what you'd rather do yes it is uh definitely more interested in the technical side and if that's not available then what hmm uh, i'm not sure um i've always wanted to write but i've talked a lot about writing but not actually written so what kind of writing are you talking are you thinking about um uh short fiction mm -hmm. yeah can you support yourself as a writer like a a, a patron of your own art um i i would i would probably have to have some sort of supplemental income i'm not uh, set up financially right now where I, where I could or would actually, uh, yeah, I don't think I'm in a position. I haven't actually uh, researched that uh, to see if I'm in a position where I could just retire and uh, live off the, the savings, but I, probably I would have to have something to supplement it. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I, I don't think it would require something full time. Okay. So potentially I could consult, for example, you know, on a part-time basis. All right. Um, what, um, what did you really want to think through, given that here's what we have so far? Um, at a certain point, it's probably sooner than later, um, the company will be sold. You do not want to continue as CEO. You may or may not get offered a job um, that's to your liking. And if not, um, then you actually don't know what you might do. Uh, you would like to write, but you'd have to supplement your income. And perhaps consulting uh, is what you might go to. Correct. And I, I guess the, um, you know, especially after having attended some of your uh, workshops and uh, reading your stuff, I, I obviously realized that my approach up until now has been very reactive, just waiting for what, what are the circumstances? How are they gonna unfold? And when I got your email, I was kind of like, this is a great opportunity to not just be in a reactive mode, but to really become the, the driver of the process. Mm -hmm. 
what has uh, what has the history uh, been for you in terms of being the driver of the process? Not much, to be honest. Um, I actually got into this career uh, with no, this was not something that I aspired to. I was basically going to be a summer job. In fact, I'd never had done geophysics. Uh, I just graduated from college and got a summer job. And um, um, basically, to, I was originally going to go to graduate school, but I liked the work so much that I decided to stay with it. And um, uh, but it was not something that I had consciously chosen, but I, I've enjoyed it very much. It involved a lot of international travel, the science I really like. Um, and there's also uh, both uh, in, originally I was involved in, in processing the data that was collected and it's kind of a combination of a science and an art. It, there's, a, there's a lot that's not just real deterministic. So I enjoyed that. And since moving into management, I really like uh, customer interactions or selling and, and presenting our technology. So, um, but um, yeah, I, I, to be honest, it, this was not a chosen career path. It's one I've enjoyed certainly up until now, yeah. um, but it's not, um, it's not like it was a driving passion. But what, what, what did you go to school for? Well, uh, original, well, when I graduated, it was philosophy which <laughs> will we'll explain why. And, and I, I was very clear um, when I was in college that you know that was not going to get me a career because I, I didn't want to be a, a professor. Um, but um, I was really, I just took courses that interested me and it's sort of a philosophy degree. It's actually an interdisciplinary degree where I was able to Kind of take all the classes I that I liked or that looked interesting to me, but I had to then write a thesis that explained how they all went together. So I had a lot of science initially, a lot of math and science my first two years, and I continued that somewhat my my final two years. But most of uh, my final two years was really focused on humanities, uh, um, literature, English, uh, a lot of philosophy, a lot of history. Um, that sort of thing. So um, how long has it been since you've been with the company that you started? Your oh, well, I started as CEO. So it's been about six and a half years. No, no. But what about the, you started as, as a summer job? Oh my gosh. That was in 1979. That was at a much different, that was at a different company. So it's okay. been uh, 40, over 40 years. How did you move from one company to another company? Um, I was with my first company about 20 years. I they had just uh, assigned me overseas uh, to London and were about to send me back to Houston, which is where I'm at now, the Houston area, after I just moved my family um, because there was going to be a, a shakeup at the company. Um, it, it, it was basically the company was going to be being purchased by uh, Schlumberger and they wanted me to move from my position as Eastern Hemisphere uh, manager to be worldwide Marine manager, but go back to Houston. And I didn't want to move. So I um, looked around, I wanted to stay in uh, London. I really enjoyed it. And so I found a company that wanted someone uh, in the London area and I stayed with them about four years. Okay. And then I've then there's an example, though, where you didn't drift from one thing to another. You actually decided absolutely, uh, absolutely. what you wanted and then you then you went for it and got it. Yeah. yeah. And then um, while I was working at that company, so I was there at the other company for four years um, and it worked OK. I had a, a, a boss at the time that was a micromanager, but he was in Houston. And I was in London, so I had like three hours to prepare mm -hmm. <laughs> for when he would wake up. And I and, and it worked out well, but I had told my boss, I said, okay, listen, I, I don't need all of this. OK, so here's what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to sort of get an overview of when you make decisions that involve change. OK, all right. So the next okay, change so was. Do you understand? Because Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, I, okay. I, I, OK, got it. <laughs> 
So you don't need the story. I, I just need the headlines. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, so the next time I actually changed positions was when I moved back from uh, London to Houston. Um, and that was when I changed companies. Uh, Why did you do that? I'm sorry. Why did you change companies? Um, uh, the the boss at the time uh, didn't give me the freedom that I wanted to uh, run my run my area the way I wanted to. So I needed to move to a, a, another company. Okay. So you decided you didn't like it and you were going to move on. Right. Okay. So in both instances, you decided there was something. Um, you didn't want and moved on and you initiated the move on. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. The next move was one that I moved, not because I was moving away from something. It was actually a job that I liked, but um, it was a new technology that was just coming out and they were looking for someone to start up the America operation for that um, for that uh, new technology. And so th this was one where I wasn't moving away from something that was not satisfactory, but it was actually a technology that I was interested in and uh, worked with them for quite a while okay. until they ran into some severe financial problems. And then you had to move on again. Yes. And then I selected, a, a, again, a, a, a company that was not a complete startup, but a, nearly a startup and uh, worked with them uh, to basically uh, run their marine division and stayed with them until they had financial difficulties. The oil field services had I, lots of uh, difficulties. That. Either and then that, I, or either that, or you are the kiss of death for a company. Uh, it may be. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll anyway. tell you that there's hardly any of the companies that, like when I started, that are the only one that. Well, actually, none of them are around as they existed when I started. Hmm. So, um, and then uh, six years ago, um, how did that happen? Um, I'm looking about, I'm looking for what happened in the transition from to, from what to the new. Okay. Yeah. Uh, from uh, the transition from the company I was with to the company I was, I came to here, it was, um, it was basically just a, a random, I, I got a call. Um, from the per, from basically from the board, so a member of the board of directors that knew me, uh, that basically said the CEO of the company I'm with now is leaving. Um, would you like to have a beer and talk about this? And I said yes. I, now yeah. I wasn't particularly happy at the company I was with. I wasn't actively uh, searching for another job. I was trying to work with the CEO of that company to explain uh, what. The problems were uh, that I was having with uh, uh, some of the personnel, but um, this other opportunity came and it was a better opportunity for me. Okay. Although you don't particularly like uh, having to be in that position of CEO man management. I, 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 I really enjoyed it. I'll be honest. Uh, uh, for the first five and a half years, it was a tremendous challenge. Mm. Um, it uh, and we had really developed some momentum and we were moving forward. And when COVID hit was right around the time also when OPEC and Russia were having issues and the, basically the bottom fell out of the market, we're starting to recover again. But you know, part of it may just be that it, it, I realized from running it those five years, how much energy and passion it takes to really do a good job. And it's not that I don't have that energy. It's just that I, uh, this is an opportunity for me to, to look. Is there a way to redirect it to something that maybe I am more passionate about where I don't yeah. have to 
build the passion where I'm more well, pulled. Well, you, you talk about, there's two terms that you use that I wanted to um, talk to you about. One is enjoy and the other is passion. Mm -hmm. And um, what do you, what is it? Why do you think you have to have passion? Um, I mean, what's with you and passion? What, can't you just want to do something? Um, no, yeah, yeah, actually, it's got to be something I want to do. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, have but, to be. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just wonder if you just pick that up from the culture and use that term just to mean you want to do something, or do you actually think you have to be inspired? Um, that's a... Uh... That's a good question. I, it, let me take a second to think about it because uh, mm -hmm. obviously as CEO, you get a lot of business speak and, and uh, leadership speak, I guess. So let, um, I think part of what I'm what what really is underlying this is that a lot of my role as CEO, uh, I like working with people, but I it, it's it can be very draining for me, and it's not one of my natural inclinations. But it's what a CEO spends at, at least I have spent a lot of time. Uh, basically a, a fair bit of my time with uh, working with the management team to try and keep the yeah, train well, that, on the track. That's the job. Of yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the gig. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you haven't answered the question about passion. No, I haven't. I just have to like you know i have to and you know i have to like what i'm doing i, I want to actually enjoy what i'm doing mm -hmm. okay okay so here here's where we are uh just once again is this uh job is coming to an end mm -hmm. even if it were offered to you you would refuse it because you just don't want the ceo um, the, the, um, what it takes to be CEO, uh, period. Um, if there were, was a scientific job to your liking, you probably would take it, mm -hmm. but there's no, um, we don't know yet if that's a possibility. Yeah, that's true. And, and uh, certainly if, I wanted just a scientific job. I mean, there's other possibilities besides just, you know, this, this, whoever buys this, obviously. Well, um, would you want another full-time job, um, in, in the area that we're talking about? In, in the technical area, in the, in the scientific, yeah, that, that would, that would actually meet my needs perfectly. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you done anything to, uh, try to get one i i haven't and part of the reason is is that um as soon as i start looking everyone will know uh that i'm looking um and that obviously compromises the sales process and you know the other thing is is i don't know how that would impact the value of the company so okay. in yeah, you know, so you deference to my my parent company i can't really do that okay all right have you um have you informally looked around to see what the market will bear? Yeah, um, I have. And, uh, you know, I, with, with the companies that are still around, uh, I feel comfortable that I could, um, uh, you know, secure a, 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 an advisory or technical position. Um, it would be at lower pay and that would be fine with me. I, I feel... Okay comfortable that I could do something like that. And again, I don't know if it'd be full-time or, um, or part-time because again, I'm just, I know that all the other companies are under the same financial mm -hmm. uh, pressures that my current company is. Is it a buyer's market or a seller's market in, in, as far as uh, labor goes? <clears throat> um, 
it's probably an, a fairly even balance, just even given that there is a, a potential labor shortage in oil field services. There's lots of articles about that. The reality is, is that uh, not a lot of companies have money to uh, spend it. So I, I would say th there's not, it's not one where there's anyone that's got leverage. I think it's going to be a case both for a company and for an individual that if they see a really good fit, they'll, um, they'll invest and they'll, you know, make a decision. But if it's not a good fit, there's no compelling reason for a company to have to spend money right now. Okay. On people. So here's where we are. Um, you have a plan A and, a plan uh -huh. B. and I don't know which one is A and which one's B, but one of them is to either with the company you're with now or a different company, um, get a position that is science-based uh, in accordance to what your interests are. And plan B is to become a consultant and a writer. Yeah, and when you say it that directly, um, um, you know the 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 other thing that is just in that comes to me is that if I got it, if I have a technical position, um, I I believe I would ha I would not have an excuse for not <laughs> writing, regardless of uh, you know wh whether I was a consultant or a full time technical person, because having done the technical roles before, I know that I have much more energy at the end of the day than I do as a, a CEO. Um, so uh, I think, um, you know, the, the exploring the writing is something I, I, I know I just don't have the energy and focus for right now in my current role. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I think, you know, that decision, uh, could be something I, I could do in either case, yeah. whether I was a consultant or a you wouldn't have employee. an excuse. Do you, what does that mean? Oh, wow. I mean, listen, I, I understand what you said, just to, yeah. so you know, that when you work as hard as you do, there's very little left over to write. Right. Particularly with the amount of concentration it, it probably would take you. But yeah. now, as you imagine having less pressure on you and less energy used up for the current type of job you do, mm -hmm. you said, um, I won't have an excuse. <laughs> and I just wanted to know what you meant by that. Uh, I, I can see that I was beating myself up. Um, um... Did I mean by that? Well, why? Yeah, I, I was beating myself up. I, I was why? saying that if I really want to write, just write. <laughs> why do you say it that way? Since um, given the circumstances that you're currently in, you can't just, if you want to write, just write. I don't know. I don't know why I'm beating myself up like that. I, I, it, it's what do you have um, a going in relationship to being a writer? What do I have going in terms of being a writer? Um, Some, I would say I have. Do you some, understand the source of my question? Why I asked you that question? I, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but it's because of the way you are guilt tripping yourself yeah. by not writing, even though the circumstances make it hard for you to write. Right. <clears throat> so putting two and two together. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> You think, well, what's with you in writing? You know, why why do you think somehow you have to be a writer 
I don't feel like I have to, I don't have to be a writer. It's something when I, even in my current job, when I write, even if it's marketing material or um, I prepare presentations, I really enjoy uh, the process of working with the the written word. I I know, but you're not um, understanding what you also did, which is, it's not about enjoy. It's about get guilt tripping yourself when you didn't write. Yeah. So what I'm seeing is that you must have some thought about being a writer. That's um, an extracurricular agenda to that. You quote unquote, enjoy it. Yeah. Does that make sense to you? By the yeah, way. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I, I guess it's something that it's you know, the desire to, to actually write something that was, you know, not marketing material and, and to, to write some fiction has been something that I've thought about a long time, including when I was in technical positions, but again, didn't uh, uh, take the, at the time, I didn't realize that how lucky I was to have energy at the end of the day and didn't do that. So um, that may be part of the reason for that, that statement. I don't know. It doesn't add up because um, you wouldn't guilt trip yourself if you just understood that it was logistics that was preventing you from writing. Um, What's with you and being a writer? Um, why why is that important to you? And you have to really separate the where you usually go with this is what you enjoy. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. You no, know, okay. you're gonna tell me how you enjoy it, even yeah. though you don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So what is what does it mean to you to be a writer of it means a chance to uh, express myself uniquely. And why is that important? Because I have one life and I'm getting older. And therefore what? I really want to see what I can do uh, in that medium versus in the medium of business and uh, earning a living. Yeah, except um, the way you're describing it, it almost sounds symbolic okay. in relationship to your life. I'm getting older, you know, time's running out. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. You know what I mean? There's, <laughs> there's a way that- It's dramatic. Position, yeah. There's a way you think about it, actually think about it in which being a writer um, adds a certain kind of meaning to your life that otherwise your life wouldn't have. Absolutely. And what is that meaning? What is that meaning? Yeah. Why does it matter whether you're right or not? Why does it matter if I write or not? In relationship to meaning, you know, yeah. not in relationship to actually liking to write. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, but but it's yeah. it's more the position you put it in, in relationship to how you see your life, that you and I are exploring. Right, and uh, I guess one of the things that I do with writing is I do a lot of journaling, and one of the things that as I'm writing down ideas or just reflecting on things, which I tend to do in writing, um, it actually helps me do, it, it helps me understand what I'm thinking. A lot of times the, the writing process- you don't write or fiction to have that. You can continue to write journals and have exactly that same impact and you wouldn't think about it one way or another in terms of in terms of whether or not you uh, had time to write so what i'm looking at is the way you position the idea of writing as separate from what you just said about the benefits of writing all right how do i position writing Well, um, let me yeah, help yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. I, and I, you, you've thought of something? Well, the only thing that came to me was that, you know, I, it's, I've always thought of writing can be a hobby or a, a, a sideline, but, uh, you know, not something that is pursued. You know, I, I um, haven't That's thought of it. That's the logistics of it. And yeah. I'm going after the meaning of it in yeah, your life. Yeah. Okay. I keep changing yeah. the subject. Okay. Or All right. Not, you know, it's not. It's not exactly you're changing the subject. It's a. It's that when you start to really think about the question, you gear to you. You drift toward a different. Okay. Topic, rather than focus on the, the question, mm -hmm. and, you know, you could love writing. You could hate writing. You could want to write whether you love it or hate it yeah um the the it's not about the actual act of writing itself it's the position you hold it in or how you see yourself as writer in terms of it lending or giving meaning to your to your life um that we're exploring and particularly as you said i'm getting older and time's running out and yeah yeah and um so i'm trying to understand what you think writing gives you that you otherwise don't have i actually mean being a writer gives you not writing itself, but yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it, it's funny when you put it that way because I, you know, it's uh, I don't know that there's anything that I don't have that writing is going to uh, provide me. Is there anything I don't have? Well, you said it would yeah. give you a certain meaning. It gave me meaning. Uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, yeah. with that, okay. Yeah, 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 and that, yeah. Let's have this picture here. We have yeah. you with meaning yeah. and you without meaning. Right, right, right. Well, I have right. meaning now. Yeah, but it's not the kind of meaning that this would the, give you. Right. Okay, and okay. You know, mm -hmm. even being a CEO, which, you know, in most circles is pretty high up there, doesn't give you what the writing would yeah, yeah 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 that 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 is my idea um yeah now why what what is it that i think that it's going to give me draw this uh, for you, 
just going to share my screen. Um, yeah, there we go. So we have uh, writing on one side. Yeah. And um, let's call it just um, normal on the other side, normal life. Yeah. And there's something about this um, that it adds. And if it adds, that means that here it's missing. Yeah. So that's, you know, just a very simple way of describing it. And that, in, that in terms of the question. Yeah. That, that helps in, in the, as you were drawing that, you know, what, what, what is it that writing is going to add? It, it's a similar thing that uh, I think a more technical job is going to add. And, you know, I guess, I don't know that it's adding something. It's letting me work, you know, if I'm doing technical stuff, I'm mainly dealing with, um, scientific problems, concepts, procedures, processes. I'm working, you know, the medium I'm working in is, um, it's easier to work with than people. And I guess that's the, also the, my uh, thinking about writing is that, uh, you know, I'm working with words and uh, structuring a story, but there's... Um, no, see, so you've slipped back into... Yeah. Um, if it adds to enjoyment um, rather than, and we're trying to figure out why you would beat yourself up for not being able to do it, given, right. given that the logistics currently are that it, it would be very difficult for you to do it. Right, right, right. Lost it at the end of the day. Yeah. Maybe. And you know, not too many people, I guess, I don't know anybody who can work all day as a CEO and come home at night and sit down and write, you know, a short story, a play, a screenplay, a novel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um... So it's the beat yourself up part of this. It was, was... A, it was a cue. And it wasn't, by the way, it wasn't something that was a throwaway. And, you know, you kind of thought, well, no, 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 you said it, you actually do it. And so that's why I, we're pursuing this thing um, is because yeah. there's, there's some reason, there's some, something that you think is true that you may not know you think is true. that would motivate your guilt tripping yourself uh, about not writing when the circumstances are that it's next to near impossible. Yeah. Part of, um... What's coming up to me is is the difference in contribution I would make, and I'm not even sure contribution to who my daughters, myself. Um, well, what does it contribute? Well, uh, you know, that's one of the things I've been asking about the field I'm in currently. I mean, it provides energy and it, it's what, you know, drives society and certainly it, it's an important uh, part. Okay. Um, okay, so you think somehow that your life has to contribute to the world. Is that true or not true? I don't know that it needs to contribute to the world, um, but to like this, uh, at least a small sphere around me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> small yeah. world, big, 
world with a small W versus capital W. <laughs> well, I, I'm also CEO of a small company, so it, so it's a small. <laughs> no, but the point is, the, yeah. the point is, um, at your life in, in it, the implication is, yeah, that your life has to have purpose. Uh, yeah, that's probably something I believe. Yeah. Why do you believe that? Take a break for a second. Okay. And, and just to see where we are here. Yeah. Um, it's what we're exploring is the idea, the concept that your life has to have um, good purpose, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And you've always assumed that to be. And now I'm asking you to think through the proposition. Okay. Um, if you think that's true, why, why is that true? I mean, for example, is that true for everybody? Is it true for your kids? My instant answer is yeah. Um, but, you know, as you ask me what the, you know, what supports that, what, why? Well, let's think about your kids for a second because yeah. it might be easier okay. to think about it from their point of view than from your point yeah. of view. Um, how many kids do you have? Three. And uh, in your opinion, all of them, or your, your thought up to this point is that all of them have had to fulfill some positive purpose in life. Uh, yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. And why, why would they have to do that? I mean, why can't they just live? That's a good question. I, I, I have never asked myself that question. Well, this is a good chance for you to think it through and see if you agree with yourself. <laughs> I, I can't think of any reason why they would need to fulfill a specific purpose. I, uh, you, you snuck in the word specific. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is a life without purpose? Um, well, I think it's better if you think about one of your kids specifically mm -hmm. by name and ask yourself, you know, do they have to accomplish anything in life? Do they have to fulfill some purpose? Or is it okay with you if they just live their lives um, however they see fit? It's fine with me. It's, okay. Yeah. Well, all right. So w within boundaries, yeah, I, yeah. I don't want them to be mass murderers or. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, but that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. Okay, yeah. but you know, it, it's in this sense, um, it's a question of freedom. Yeah. That. Uh, and freedom is different than sovereignty. Sovereignty is you're not free to throw your garbage on my lawn. Mm -hmm. So it's not really a question of freedom. That's a question of sovereignty. So mass murder is a, not about freedom. It's about right, sovereignty. right. Yeah. But uh, it just in terms of um, your kids, um, you would. I'm going to say the statement, and you tell me whether it's true or not. Um, you actually in your values, you would support them being free to live their lives the way they see fit. Absolutely. Yeah. And <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah. Um, whether or not they accomplished <laughs> anything like a purpose. Yeah. And it doesn't, uh, I didn't mean to sneak in the word specific. Sorry. <clears throat> well, it, it's fine if they have, the you structure. know, no, no purpose. Yeah, yeah. No, the, what goes on here is the underlying structure that you have going on 
is trying to defend itself and maintain mm. itself. Mm. Okay. We see this all the time. This is the nature of structural dynamics. Okay. Is when you get close to a concept mm. that you may uh, disagree with. And if you disagree with it, it would change your whole mm. life orientation yeah. in a way that's funny. It's funny how the concept itself wants to kind of, <laughs> you know, look here, look there, look somewhere else. Don't look at me. <clears throat> Because yeah. in a way, you have two things going on. One is your concept of um, living a life of purpose. <clears throat> and the other is your value of people are free to live their lives the way they see fit. See fit. I mean, of course, not being mass murderers. And, you know, you know yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, that, that, uh, that they, you, you support them living their lives uh, in accordance to how they would want to live them, not how you would have them live them. Absolutely. Yeah. So there's this inherent conflict between the concept, <clears throat> concept of fulfilling useful purpose. And uh, that's a pretty deep... Um, Yeah, that, that's something that that certainly I've thought about my life and about my daughter's life and about my company, to be honest. I mean, um, and it, um, is that it has to have a purpose. Well, it has to have a purpose that... Uh, that you can support to support your purpose. Yeah. Hmm. So um, your kids would be free to live their lives the way they see fit. Um, what about you? <clears throat> Do you have the same freedom or not? No, look, right now, I don't know what the, I don't know what I, that would look like, to be honest. It doesn't matter what it would look like, because no. we're not talking about what it would look like. Um, you're trying to determine the benefits or the uh, consequences. Yeah. And um, what I'm looking at is your concept in relationship to your values. Yeah. And yeah. Um, your your notion of having to have a, a life uh, that has meaningful purpose dominates how you think about everything. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So it's interesting because then if you think about that in relationship to the writing, it's not about the writing. Yeah, you're, and it's you're not right. about the job and it's not it's not it's about everything <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah intellectually i i 100 percent understand it, it well, just, actually it feels funny when you're saying intellectually what you really mean is superficially yeah, I, I, it feels funny to think. Well, I'll tell you what, let's put it, let's think it through even more. Okay. Why does a life have to have purpose? It, it doesn't. I, I, I see that. It, 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 okay. All right. life, so, life is so, its own. Well, I mean, are you trying to justify your existence? Of what do you, what's the function? of having to have purpose. Mm. Why is it not okay to do what you want independent of whether it has purpose or, or not? And, and another way of asking it is, it isn't to say that you can't create purposes, yeah, yeah. You, you know, which is your choice. This is not in the realm of choice. This is the realm of obligation. 
Right. You know, you, you have to fulfill some good purpose. You don't know what it is. You'll maybe look for it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it's got to qualify as, you know, you doing something good in the world that contributes. Yeah, absolutely. That, the, that is, you know, it gives my life value. And, and when I say that, as soon as, I say that given what you've just shared with me, it's like, well, it's not like my life doesn't have value. I've been living though, as if it doesn't have value unless it's got yeah. purpose. Yeah. And I deeply believed that. Do you still? I don't know. I don't Let's know. See if we can, uh, if you can prove it to yourself, that would help. And it would also help if you can't prove it to yourself. Yeah. Like, why can't you just exist? Why does it have to have a purpose? And um, why do you think if your life doesn't have value if you're not fulfilling a purpose? You know, I'm, I really understand these are sort of existential questions. No, no, no. And it's, it's, uh, if I'm, I'm not trying to stall, it's. You're not. I'm, no, you're not stalling. You're thinking it through and it's tough. I mean, here, we, we've been talking for about 50 minutes. Yeah. You've been thinking this your whole life. <laughs> so the fact that you can't turn on a dime is not surprising. <laughs> but on the other hand, you've never asked yourself these questions. You've always assumed that to be true. Yeah. So in light of day, what's it look like? And uh, what are the implications of that for you in your life? I, I certainly can't think of any logical justification of why my life will have more value with having purpose, why it has to have purpose. Mm. That's just, as you said, the assumption I've been uh, operating under. Yeah. It, uh, okay, let's, let's try it this way. Mm -hmm. um, if you fulfilled some purpose, how would that justify your existence? Well, my my existence it, it doesn't need justification. I mean, I exist. It's <laughs> I exist. There's I'm alive. Um, you know, I didn't ask for it. It's it's here. I'm glad I'm here. It's just like it. I I exist. I, I don't. It doesn't doesn't need a uh, a purpose uh, to justify it. it it's just a fact i exist okay say this sentence and try it out for size and see if um how your mind takes it okay the sentence the sentence is i do not have to justify my existence i do not have to justify my existence now here's another question is if you wanted to could you justify your existence If I wanted to, could I justify my existence? Probably not. I think that's what I've been doing most of my life. And it's like a game without an end point. Yeah. Hmm. I just realized that. Yeah, yeah. So you exist. Yeah. And there's no way to justify it. It's just, you know, it's like winning the lottery, right? <laughs> here you are. You didn't yeah, I'm it, here. But you got it. I already won it. Yeah, yeah. here it is. So um, what's it like when you think about your future now? Because if I, if I described your thought process as the company engagement comes to a close, um, the way I think of up to now, up to our talking, is that you would look for some candidate to fulfill a purpose that inadvertently would 
have the subtext of justifying your existence. Yes. For you to be alive. Yeah. And now, if what we're describing is reality, independent of how, how, how you've ever thought about it. Yeah. But if it's reality, how does that change the way you might be looking at what you might do in the future? The, the, the sense I've got is it just opens up. It almost makes whether, you know, the company sold or um, not, or and whether I write or consult or get a technical job sort of irrelevant that that's not the issue it open it's it's really it, kind of feels like anything you know that it's up to me to decide what i want to do yeah. it's not about so that gives you a level of freedom yeah of choice it just um, feels like instead of you know it's this or that or it's kind of like everything opening up right. Say that again, because you froze a little bit on my end. Um, I said, instead of like kind of being in narrow tracks of it's either this or that or that, it's kind of like everything opened up and uh, yeah. it's really not even about necessarily making a choice between alternatives. It's about exploring what I want to do next. Yeah, so uh, the, the, I'm going to ask you some questions and they're not meant to be rhetorical, but do you feel a sense of freedom? Yeah. Do you feel like there's a burden taken off your shoulders to some degree? Yeah. Do you feel more energetic? Actually, I'm feeling uh, a lot of tension in my back. That's why I'm moving. I, I feel a lot of it. Uh, Mm. moving out trying to move out um, i'm still feeling it but yes i definitely yeah. feel a, a a loosening up also uh i would imagine you feel very disoriented yeah i'm not used to not selecting between alternatives but kind of having a wide open field mm. in front of yeah. me yeah So um, I'm going to try, I'm going to give I've been some holding phrases. my breath. I just noticed I, you know, as I'm thinking through this, I'm just, you know, I've, uh, and I'm, you know, as, as I kind of process this, I'm starting to breathe a little easier. Yeah. Let me show you structurally what's going on. Um, I have to again share my screen. So. Sure. Okay, so um, I'm going to describe three frames. One is uh, the dynamic urge. And uh, there is a reality. And then there's concepts. What? connected in a unit and in structurally what they're striving for is equilibrium and it's like a feedback system uh, dynamic urge um, it really is values and aspirations And uh, in your concepts, it was um, purpose. Now, um, what happens is, you know my rubber band thing, two rubber bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's two tension resolution systems. And as you go for what you want, you're always going to be asking yourself, well, does this fulfill my purpose? And um, if you happen to be going after your purpose, uh, your question is, well, does this give me what I want? And so there's an oscillating pattern. You're always going to be going back and forth between these two um, areas. But now what we've done, um, and hopefully uh, this is not a temporary, but a permanent insight that you will have that will enable you to govern your life differently um, is that we have disconnected the concept of, of um, purpose uh, from this structure. And now what you've got left is structural tension, which can resolve in favor of what you want, which are your values and your aspirations. And that's the kind of change of underlying structure that we're able to accomplish when you look at your underlying concepts in light of day and see that in fact, um, the, in this case, that it wasn't true that you did not need to justify your existence yeah. and that um, you're free to live your life the way you want. Yeah. Now, there might be things you want to do yeah. and there might be purposes you want to create, but not out of obligation, out of desire, choice, you know, aspiration, your values. And I think the, one of the ways we help you get there in that insight was to think not on your behalf, but on behalf of your kids. It was like an easier way in. And, because and, you could, and, you, and, you could uh, certainly not want to impose what you had imposed on yourself. You didn't want to impose that. Yeah, on the, uh, uh, although it, you know, in reflecting on it, I, I certainly have imposed that concept um, on my kids as well. Um, yeah. Well, I'm sure they'll be very happy to hear you've changed your mind. <laughs> yeah yeah they probably will be they probably will be yeah because uh it's, it's not to say that you know we don't in our lives want to choose purposes that we care about and support them yeah but that's different than an obligation obligation is you have to do it no choice yeah. choices yeah. you can do it or not it's up to yeah. you yeah. yeah yeah um i think we're pretty much done um unless you have any questions about this no I, I really appreciate you sticking with you know uh as i <laughs> sort of froze and was like okay what uh, i wasn't clear and it did help certainly to think about hmm. uh, i guess i didn't see it as an imposition on myself it was much clearer when i saw that making someone else have a purpose uh, that made it much clearer to me yeah. uh, what I, uh, yeah, my, my assumption that I'd been making. Hmm. What was it like doing the session? Cause you know, we're, we're, our whole idea is to um, do a, many of these sessions and then let, let people see them because it's so different than any other kind of it's approach. Not any, it's, it's not, I didn't know what to expect. And uh, it, but I must have had some sort of preconception because pretty early on, I was like, okay, this is not what I expected, but I, I don't know. I must have had, uh, I must have had some expectation. I really don't know what it was, but it, it, it was, uh, it was confusing at first. Uh, I, uh, I normally don't take as long as I did to uh, answer questions um but it was because i hadn't thought along those lines it was not uh yeah but i i thought it was very well it, it opened up a, a a vista that uh i i didn't realize was operating in the background i, I didn't realize how mm. you know as you um as you went through it, it was like how pervasive that assumption is that in order to 
be a valuable life. A life has to have purpose. It has to fulfill. It has to contribute. It has to. And um, that's, can you see ways um, in your life if you look at the past? Uh, I, I see a lot of. I see a very fundamental pattern in my life that I've been, you know, part of the reason I probably wanted to be CEO, even though mm -hmm. it, it may not meet, not, not be with my natural inclinations is probably to show myself that I had value or meaning or purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. it's sort of, you know, I, I can see a large part of my adult, well, probably most Almost all my adult life until whatever, 12, 35 or whenever we, we got to it has been a, sort of an exercise to justify or um, mm. prove my value to myself or to the world. I, I don't know who, but yeah. it, it's real clear that that's been a, uh, a, a driving force in mm. what's how my life has played out. And, how I made decisions. In the session, um, there were certain points where that became clearer and clearer and clearer. Um, can, can, on your side of things, can you describe what those moments were like and the, how it, um, how you processed it? It, it? it was very difficult for me to process. In fact, uh, I really didn't get what you were getting at until, until you took me out of the picture and brought my daughters in. That was where I could see that there was a distinction between um, just being alive and living your life. And in that it was very clear to me that my daughters, just the fact that they're here, I mean, that, that again, that's the gift. I've got them. And they don't have to do anything. They don't have to have a purpose. They don't. And I could real clearly see that purpose was an imposition on their freedom to live life as they wish. Mm -hmm. uh, until then, when we were talking about me, I, I didn't. If you'd asked me at the beginning, you know, do you feel free? Well, yeah, I, I feel like I can do whatever I want. And it was a bit of a revelation to. But I, I couldn't see that just looking at myself. I almost yeah. had to have a Step out someone else. Yeah. So I really appreciate so you. That then, that then lets you think about it from your own point of view. Absolutely. It, it wasn't until I saw that it's absolutely not right to impose that on my daughters that then I questioned, well, why is it okay to impose that on yourself? Yeah. Hmm. I, I just, it's kind of like a fish in the water. I, you know, the yeah. water is, I was just, well, if, you know, of course you have to have purpose. And I hadn't hmm. thought. Well, you know, and the world is uh, very happy to tell you, you have to have purpose. And they were also happy to tell you what the purpose has to be. <laughs> Yeah, I'm familiar Depending with on that. the world view, it could be a lot of different things, but yeah, that's uh, sort of like your marching orders from, uh, yeah. from them. Yeah. The, um, the thing that um, I saw you do, though, is you really thought it through. You took it very seriously. You didn't always understand what the question was or how to think about the question. You're always being quite serious in your exploration of the questions that I asked you and trying to think it through. And as I said before, sometimes you see the structure almost like defending itself, trying to um, change. When you the pointed subject. it out, I could see it. Um, you could see I, your mind going, well, you know. <laughs> and the thing about it is the underlying structure of anything will determine its behavior. Yeah. Without that concept in your structure, um, you, not only will you feel freer, but the prediction is because of where the change of underlying structure will lead, 
is you'll be free to make the kind of choices that will be in your own best interest and on your own behalf uh, when the changes come in your company. That um, you can think about it clearly versus with the hidden agenda. Yeah. Of finding okay. a candidate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, the, which will make me more, which path will make me more valuable or more. Yeah. Yeah, make my life more meaningful. Um, one last um, description of how you have, how we've talked a bit since I asked you last time how you felt. And um, how do you feel now? Uh, the tension is definitely uh, leaving. And um, it, it's, I'll be honest, it's still an unusual um, thought uh, or it, it's, uh, it, I, I feel certainly I've released a lot of tension. I, I can see that the burden's gone. Um, it's not, <laughs> the, the concept isn't, I, I can't say it's not, it, uh, it's not giving up without a fight, but. Um, uh, the, the place the, to look is reality. Yeah. So when your mind starts to try to uh, manipulate you yeah. in fulfilling some purpose, otherwise, purpose. <laughs> otherwise your life doesn't have meaning, um, look at reality and yeah. test that thought out yeah. and see if it stands up to scrutiny because it will not. Yeah. 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 But no, I, I definitely, um, I, I I, I, what the, the biggest change, the biggest shift really is that this conversation, which I thought was going to be about what decision, which of the options do I need to pick? Mm. Um, as I said, it's uh, what feels pretty amazing to me is that that's not a question that bothers me that much right now. Yeah. At all. In fact, it doesn't bother me at all. Um, that, yeah, that's what I thought the issue was, uh, was, you know, what's the next, um, what's the next step in my path? And I, I, you know, basically I've already got the answer. It's whatever I want, whatever I, you know, whatever I want to do. But it has you know, such I, different meaning now. Yeah. It's not, hmm. um, yeah, it's just, yeah. That's it's great. made it, it, it. What I thought I was here to uh, get help with was, uh, was I guess a symptom uh, of of an underlying uh, structure um, that I didn't realize uh, was so prevalent. Great. So I definitely I feel much what much more at ease about that decision. And I actually feel like I'm just going to probably just enjoy the rest of the day a lot more. <laughs> Maybe really, this day and the next day and the day. Yeah, after. yeah. I just it just feels like um, yeah. yeah, it's a it is a burden gone. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a burden gone. Isn't that great? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is. Okay, well, thank you so much for well, being my thank client you and for I really really appreciate us to this. Um, share this with other folks. Well, and I really appreciate this. This is. Uh, Great. As I said, not what I expected, but much better, much better. Okay, thank you. Stick around. I'm going to end the recording and we can just say goodbye. Yeah.